the president of Zimbabwe, Robert Mugabe, spent the night in his home village of Kutama, where mourners gathered to pay their last respects. His body is then being moved back to Harare to await the construction of a shrine at the Hero's Acre, where he, his remains will be finally laid to rest. CGTN's Brian Toussaint reports. The late former president, Robert Mugabe, went home for the last time. Mourners gathered in the town of Murambedzi in Zabimba district to say their goodbyes, following the arrival of his body near his rural home village. He was celebrated as an icon by locals at the gathering, attended by the military and the Mugabe family. His body was then taken to the Mugabe homestead in Kutama. He used to tell us that we've taken the land and we should use our hands to do farming on our own and not wait to work for other people, but we should work as a people of Zimbabwe. Mugabe led Zimbabwe for 37 years before he was removed from power by the army in November 2017. He is remembered as Zimbabwe's first leader after independence in 1980. It could be about the education, or land, or even in health matters. From the time we were growing up, up until now to his death, I learned a lot especially about the issue of sovereignty. He died while undergoing treatment at a Singapore hospital on September 6th. He was 95 years old. His remains will be buried in a mausoleum at the National Heroes Acre in the capital Harare in about 30 days. We are looking forward to Mugabe being buried at the Hero's Acre because that's where his first wife is buried. Following the ceremony in the late former leader's home village, his remains will be returned to Harare. Brian Toussaint, CGTN. Well, CGTN's Farai Mwakutuya stayed in Zimbabwe's Zivimba village as the chiefs and elders led the people in paying their respects to the fallen leader. He spoke to the elders about the burial culture that applies to the late Robert Mugabe. Take a look. Evening mass ahead of an all-night vigil for Robert Mugabe, back in his rural home one final time, where village elders accorded him the appropriate respect. Our culture here in Zivimba is that when a person who was the head of the family dies, he must be brought back to his rural home. And the first thing we do, before anything else, is to take the body into the mother's kitchen, where he's dedicated to those of his clan who have gone before him. Robert Mugabe was born in that hut. It's where he ate and slept as a young man before leaving his village to go and pursue a career, initially in teaching and eventually in politics. But for people around here, it feels like he never actually left. That's because of the strong ties he maintained, making frequent visits here even during his presidency. Sometimes he will stop his motorcade and just walk around and talk to his neighbors to find out if they had any needs like medication or money to send their children to school. He seemed to have a mission to make sure that everyone here prospered. An attribute that was apparent to those who knew him from the time he was a boy up to the time he became active in politics. He was totally married to his country. He loved his country, so his people. So that's why he was able to dedicate himself unreservedly to the liberation of Zimbabwe. Father Emmanuel Ribeiro first met Mugabe when he was in primary school and later helped him escape the country to Mozambique in the 1960s. He's among the Catholic priests that will preside over the final mass for Robert Mugabe on Tuesday before his body is taken to a mortuary to await burial at the Hero's Acre once a mausoleum being built for the former president is erected. Farai Mokutuya, CGTN, Harare, Zimbabwe.